Hey gun people! Well, like I said, as soon as I do a video, <laughs> I can't find shit about the case, then somebody will post, hey man, here's all the info. <laughs> I got some great viewers, great little detectives out there that find shit that I can't, so uh, I appreciate everybody that sends me info like this. So here's the uh, 207 page document of the investigation in Rhode Island where Daniel Dolan was drinking in his car, chased a kid, and shot a kid. I said in the neck because the bandage was by his neck. They're saying it's in the arm. It looks like it hit the clavicle bone uh, in here. I just read like the first couple pages, but it was getting interesting, and I had a lot of questions and a lot of things were going through my mind. So I'm going to go through this report. I don't know if I'll make it one or two. I should probably start my timer so I, so I know how long I'm freaking yapping. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's go through this document. So we're going to talk about legal stuff. I'm going to talk about what pops through my head. If I was investigating this, why I think this happened, I'll try and explain what they did, how they're wording it, and uh, we'll try to understand. I remember Daniel Dolan, off-duty cop, chases a kid. Supposedly he was going 125. He's in a Ford 250 or 350 truck. Supposedly he keeps up with him, somehow runs into him again, even though the kid's driving 125 miles an hour, somehow this Ford truck catches up to him in a parking lot at a pizza place. And he gets out, badges him, jumps in front of the car. When the kid tries to drive away, he shoots the kid through the driver's side window. So uh, let, let's see what's going on here. Uh, so Daniel Dolan, alias John Doe, I'm not sure why they're saying this. Uh, d did D Daniel Dolan change his name? Sometimes people will change their name. I don't know if he changed his name now, if he has another name, or if he's changing his name. Uh, I, I just don't understand if somebody can clear that up and comment on why they keep saying alias John Doe. Okay, so in any criminal complaint, they usually put the, the charges, and the charges are count are listed as counts. So count one, he's being charged uh, with a dangerous weapon to wit a 40 caliber semi pistol resulting in serious injury violation of 11-5-2 of the general laws of Rhode Island. This is basically like the penal code. In California, it would be P penal code 245, assault with a deadly weapon. Uh, count two, he's being charged with uh, dangerous weapon to wet 40 caliber violation of Rhode Island. Another, uh, evidently it's different or it applies. Count three, uh, dangerous weapon, and count for uh, discharge of a firearm to wit 40 caliber. Okay, so now we have the assistant attorney general. Now, this is just like an ADA, uh, an assistant DA. So you have the DA who's elected, and then all the other DAs that work for the DA are called assistant DAs, just like all sheriffs. Sheriffs are elected, and all deputies are deputy sheriffs but there's only one sheriff. Well, there's only one attorney general, and then there's assistant attorney general. Those are all the attorneys that do the charges. There's one DA, and then there's assistant ADAs. So uh, this has got assigned to these assistant DAAs. Here's the charging document of all the exhibits in this. Uh, State of Rhode Island did a pretty good job on this. There was a couple questions I had, but overall, I think they did a pretty good job. Um, when you're doing a case, you put all your exhibits and, you know, because this was a shooting, and anytime you deal with a shooting, you want to make sure and do it almost as if you're doing a homicide. Now, they probably didn't think this kid was going to die, because if we go to a shooting and we start an investigation, if we get that the guy was shot in the arm and he's okay, we're, we're not going to do as much as if he shot in the heart and they're trying to keep him alive. Then we're going to do more, because if, a, if someone dies from an injury from a shooting, within a year and a day, then it's considered murder and the charge is changed to murder. And you don't want to have to go back and restart a murder investigation because you did a shitty investigation on a poo butt shooting and now it turns into a murder or you've lost a lot of evidence. So in this case, I think they've done a, a pretty good, but not as much as if, if this kid was dead or they thought he was going to die. Uh, let's see, police narrative. Incident report narrative. So we're going to go through all these uh, receipt from pizza. I didn't even think they went into pizza. I don't know why they have a receipts from a good pizza. They never even got in there before they got shot. Uh, all right, so let's... 
uh, Exhibit 21, record of firearms, qualifications, trying to show that Dylan was trained. Uh, all audio recordings, handwriting, drain photos, video surveillance from... So they got cameras from uh, this place. They got camera footage from the Shell gas station. And they got footage from the pizza place. So they had three different footage. Now, they didn't, probably didn't have footage of shooting, but we'll see. Again, I didn't read this, so you're getting this. You're going to get what's flying through my mind as an investigator as I'm going through this document. Phone records. Uh, they they usually want phone records to see who called 911, what was said, who they called before, who they called after. Did they send any texts? Did they snap any pictures? Is there any videos? So that's why they seized the guy's phone, and they're going to go through that. Police radio and phone recordings. Um, this could be uh, if other people called in, hey, there's two idiots chasing each other, going 100 miles an hour, or one's a truck and one's the other. You know, or if they called in, hey, man, there's a crazy truck chasing this Audi, and, and there's three kids in the car, and, and, and the guy's waving a gun around in the truck. Well, you know, that, that would be good information to figure out what the hell is going on. And then they got some crime scene photos. All right, Exhibit 1 here. What do you got? Criminal information, affidavit, um, state of Rhode Island. I, Robert Hopkins, a peace officer, Rhode Island, Kent County, sworn special assistant attorney general. State hereby make an affidavit upon oath. I like this, upon oath and opposed to saying these matters, because this is sworn under penalty of perjury, which is good. Anytime it's under oath or sworn, it's under penalty of perjury. So people tend uh, to be a little bit careful about their lives. I have knowledge, therefore, I mean, this is typical legal bullshit, uh, but, you know, the, the officer is signing this. Robert Hawkins, I'm assuming, is an officer. Uh, it doesn't say it, but maybe I'll find out later. The assistant attorney general also signed it. But, you know, I, when I was writing warrants and shit, we cut and paste all this, therefore, to, here in, attached belief, here to, here of, all this crap. Remember, lawyers used to get paid by the word. So when you get paid by the word, they used to add a lot of freaking language. And that's why a lot of our old laws are so wordy is because attorneys used to get paid by the word. How, how about we throw in a few is and a's and how about and if and buts and coconuts and all that. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Police narrative. Okay, so let's read here what's going on here. Rhode Island State Police, uh, West Greenwich Police, area of Newstead, uh, investigate a shooting of an off-duty uh, police officer, Daniel Dolan, date of birth, 82, a subsequent investigation, cries of numerous witness, really okay, blah, blah, blah. Both Audi and Daniel Davidson exited off uh, exit six. Daniel Dolan stated that he had lost sight of the Audi on Route 45 and observed it again at Neusnack Hill Road. So this right here is a bullshit statement. This, the, whoever was taking the statement I mean, if I'm taking a statement, I'd be like, wait a minute, Officer Dolan, you said you got took an exit at exit six, and you said this guy was driving so fast and crazy you thought he's in a police pursuit. How in the hell did you end up coming after you lost sight on him again? Well, I was, uh, if he was passing on the shoulder and driving crazy, and you kept up with him, you were driving like he was, correct? Well, no, I was a by, I was a, a by, see, I would have questioned this cop better. So to me, the state police kind of let him give this bullshit statement. Daniel Dolan stated that he lost sight of the Audi and it appeared again. He observed it again. Just suddenly, suddenly out of nowhere it appears. That's bullshit to me. Uh, then he followed the vehicle in the parking lot. He didn't follow it. He chased it. He whipped in that parking lot and cut him off. Daniel Don stated he followed the Audi because he thought it had been involved in a crime. He followed the Audi followed, not chased, not, not, not followed at over a hundred miles an hour, not followed against the flow of traffic, not followed passing in the non-passing lane or emergency lane. He just followed the Audi and thought it had been involved in the crime. Hang on. I'm going to get to, when we get to the evidence and we get into all the empty beer containers in the cop's truck, uh, and they just kind of glassed over that. I don't know if they covered that or not, but I was looking at the evidence thing and I was like, what? Empty beer containers in the bottom of his truck? What? And a full six-pack? So if he had a full six-pack and there's empty containers in a car and he admitted that he took a sip from one, I'm thinking he drank more than one. But his breath test was zero-zero, of course. All right. Uh, 
operator prevent possible injury. So Daniel is being a great, wonderful cop, and he followed this guy out of the goodness of his heart because he's a hero, and he thought it might have been involved in crime. So thought police, now police can shoot you if they think something without any articulable facts. Because he didn't, I mean, as a cop, if I'm taking this guy's statement, you thought he was involved in crime. What crime did you think he was involved in? Was it a felony, misdemeanor? What, what? I didn't know. Well, why did you think it was crime? Because he was driving fast. So because he was driving fast, that brought you to the conclusion he committed a crime. Is that what your statement is? I mean, that's how you interview somebody. You don't just let them give their bullshit statement like this. Uh, he wanted to speak with an operator, with the operator to prevent from... Oh, so Daniel is saying, I followed him because I thought he was involved in a crime, and he wanted to speak to the operator to prevent him from possibly injuring somebody. Aw, Daniel Daniel was caring for the public. He wanted to protect and serve the shit out of somebody. He did. He shot the kid. Upon entering the parking lot, Daniel ab uh, abruptly stopped his vehicle, almost striking the black Audi. Uh, Daniel Dolan exited his vehicle, displayed his police badge. Bum, 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 bum. White 5 here, here. Ordered the Audi to stop. It should be noted that Daniel was not in police uniform and was operating as far as... That's good that he put that in there. I'm glad that he said it should be noted that. You know, it should be noted also he had alcohol in his breath and there was empty beer containers in the bottom of Daniel's car. Uh, upon Daniel exiting his vehicle, the black Ollie immediately drove backwards. Well, no shit. He was trying to get away. So, see, in law enforcement, people, we call this a clue. The Audi drove backwards from the officer. Okay, now that's a clue for you people that can't keep up. That means he wasn't trying to run him over because the officer was in front of him. So the car tried to back away to avoid the crazy man with the gun out of uniform. And the guy with the gun runs in front of his car with a gun, which could be he was getting carjacked. He may not know. He may not recognize him as a cop, which is why you shouldn't get involved in this. But again... He could have ran him over to save his life because he thought he was threatening him with a gun. But for Daniel to say that this guy tried to run him over when, in fact, seconds before, the Audi backed away from him trying to get away proves that Daniel is a freaking idiot. Oh, I'm sorry. That Daniel is confused about the facts. Okay. Daniel followed the black Audi and stood directly in front of the vehicle. Oh, here we go. Super officer with his Superman cape jumps in front of vehicle and holds his badge up, meaning nobody can run me over. Perfect. And if you do, I'll shoot you. So he stood in front of vehicle, preventing it from leaving. That's called unlawful detention. It's called, um, shit. It's not kidnapping. It could be kidnapping. Usually we call it, um, I can't think of the damn term right now. Anyway, um, false imprisonment is the term I'm looking for. Daniel followed the black Audi and stood directly in front of the vehicle, running it from leaving the parking lot. Has the Audi moved forward? Not has the Audi sped. Not has the Audi hit the officer. Not has the Audi tried to run him over. Has the Audi moved forward? Daniel, the cop, the off-duty road cop who had been drinking, moved to the driver's side of the vehicle, meaning he's out of danger. Drew his caliber after he moved aside of the vehicle, and they probably know this because of the video footage, and fired a single shot into the vehicle. The bullet fired by Daniel struck him in the left arm of the operator, breaking his arm. After being shot, Vincent drove the audio a short distance up the road and stopped, contacted 911. Uh, let's see, Daniel followed the Audi after he shot him, contacted 911. So he didn't call 911 until after he shot him. He thought this guy was in a pursuit. He thought he was a danger. He wanted to con him. His policy says that he shouldn't get involved. And he violated all that while drinking. But but he's a hero. I mean, Rick, why are you picking on cops? Why are you always finding these isolated incidents? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So now we're in the incident report. We get detectives. Um, felony assault and battery. So... I'm not sure here if they're saying the kid did felony assault and battery with his car or is it the cop? So this is kind of um, unclear on what's going on here. I don't know the reports. Uh, here's the victim, Vincent. He's 18. Injuries, apparent broken bones. 
you know, they put on all the witnesses and everything, ethnicity, not Hispanic. You got to say who's not Hispanic. I mean, you don't have to say what color they are. You don't have to say anything about them. Ethnicity. Why is that so important? I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. But government loves to get stats. Somehow it's related to getting money. So this is the uh, victims. Is this guy listed as victim? Okay, so victim one is the guy that got shot. And the two witnesses in the car are the two other victims. Because he pointed a gun at the car and they were in it. Uh, and here we get into the witnesses. So how many witnesses we got? Four, 12, 11. Okay, so we have 11 witnesses that they interviewed. Female, female, male, male, 21, 24, 61, 58. These are ages. Female, male. So we have quite a bit of witness statements from... Male, 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 male. Okay, from a lot of people. And what do we get here? Oh, we're still in witnesses, huh? So here's a vehicle. F-350. I didn't know if it was 250 or 350. F-350. Value five grand. Wow. Figured it'd be worth more than that. Uh, I'm not sure what this not reportable crap is. This must be some private system that they... Uh, put into some system that they're tracking. Uh, let's see. Glock 23 semi-automatic. Uh, there's a serial number and black in color. Ooh, it's a black gun. Black gun lives matter. 40 caliber cart casing found in a roadway. So they found the casing that he shot one round. A Pentucket PD shirt. That means he was probably wearing a shirt with his PD's name on it. They put that in there because they're going to argue that they should have known he was caught because he had a gun, he was holding a badge, and his shirt said PD, which really is irrelevant, but they will try. BDU pants. Ooh, man, he must be like in the seals or something. He's a tough guy. Uh, GSR collection clip. GSR's gunshot residue. Uh, they want to see who shot the gun to show that he shot it. Make sure the pattern of... Uh, the GSR is the guy holding a gun, etc. I don't know if they did a GSR. They don't say they did. Oh, they took the GSR off the driver's side window. Okay. I figured they took it off the officer's hands. They should have done a GSR on the officer's hands and probably checked the kid's uh, gunshot on his on his shoulder to see how close the officer was. Because the farther away he was, although I don't know if the GS, if the gunshot residue would go through the window after it cracked. The window might stop it. So I don't know if there would be any GSR inside or not. Anyway, T-shirt worn by Vincent, his socks, his underwear, his pants. One of his underwears had a little brain st uh, brown stain. Rick, you can't say that. Well, I'll be quiet, people. Freaking, this will get boring and shit. This, this typical police blabber. Sweatshirt, pair of shoes, projectile, seized at the hospital. So they pulled the bullet out of him, took the projectile. Uh, again, they're doing things like this in case this guy dies. This normally, you know, assault with a weapon. You don't really need all this, but... I think they did a little bit extra on this. They took the iPhone from the Audi uh, console. Again, they're going to be checking for video. Sunglasses, not sure why. Palm impression on the hood. They swabbed a palm impression on the hood. The hood of what? Is that P1? Is that person one? Parked? I don't know what the hell that is. Swab, palm impression, P2. Maybe they're calling Palm Impression 1 and Palm Impression 2 on the hood. Well, no, because now there's no 3. Now we're going to 4. Palm Impression 4 on the hood. So are these the officer's Palm Impression or are these the kid's Palm Impression? This is just an evidence log, so they might describe that later. Red stain on the driver's seat. I'm assuming that's going to be... Uh, hang on, let me warn you so YouTube doesn't get upset. Uh, we're going to be talking about dangerous things here, so the next thing I say could be offended to some people. Red stain is blood, people. Freaking crybabies. Walmart receipt in a trunk. Not sure why they took that. Uh, in a homicide, I'd take that because I'd want to go see what they bought. I'd want to go uh, get the video footage to lock them down on what time, who they were with. Did they talk to anybody? Was there a conversation? So receipts with timestamps are always good to go get more footage. But I'm not sure why they took it or what they're doing here. Eyeglasses. Um, let's see. Blue sweatshirt. 
police badge and the leather holder. Ooh, he's got a leather holder. Ooh, that's cool. Uh, DNA swab of Mr. Daniel. So they took his swab. Uh, let's see. Gray Under Armour backpack. Dash cam from the Audi. So the Audi had a dash cam. That's probably how they're getting his speed. Uh, they're going by, if the dash cam has a time on how, on, on a, a time clock or time hack, if they pass, that's how in uh, California they use airplanes a lot to issue tickets. CHP's always got the airplane there writing freaking tickets. So they have little painted lines on the road. And when a car crosses one line, they hit a stopwatch. And when it hits the next line, they hit a stopwatch. And they can tell how fast you're going. And that's how they'll radio ahead to the cop. Hey, the blue truck, uh, write him a ticket for 87. And then the cop on the ground writes him a ticket. And then if you challenge it, the hell, the the airplane or helicopter, or however they got you, has to go to court with you. So what they probably did with this dash cam is they did time hacks on when you pass this sign and you pass this sign, we know that's one mile. And you traveled one mile and this many seconds, therefore your speed is approximately this. So this is probably how they are estimating the speed. And some dash cams have a GPS which will give you the speed. They could go from one GPS coordinate to the next and get your speed. Latent fingerprint cards. Oh, look at this. Empty alcohol containers, five in the Ford. So the cop, Mr. Hero, Mr. Blue Lives Matter, Mr. Isolated Incident, off duty, chasing people, shooting a kid, five empty alcohol containers in his Ford. Nothing to see here, folks. Man, I'm telling you, Rick, you're always picking on cops, finding these guys. They're all good. They're all heroes. You just find... Shut up, you freaking private. Brown police holster. Dogfish head. Six-pack of beer. Dogfish head? I don't even drink beer, and I don't even know beer. But to me, this sounds like some cheap-ass freaking beer. Maybe it's big, expensive beer where he's at. Dogfish head beer. Really? So if there was a six-pack of beer... And the officer admitting to having one sip, but yet there's five alcohol containers. Now, look, whoever sees these should be, if they're doing a good report, when you seize alcohol containers out of vehicle, you need to say there was residual. It was damp. It smelled like alcohol. It smelled like it was, it was still cool to the touch. It had dew or condensation on the outside of the can indicating it was still cold or recently drunk. So, or, or had been, you know, recently opened out of a six pack or something. So those are details that you would do when you see this. I don't know if they did that when they seized those cans. If the cans are old and rusty and appear to be dry and not drinking from recently, then you would put that also because you want facts. You want truth. You want to get to the truth. You don't want to lie, cover up, or lean. Brown holster of uh, dogfish head beer. Hang on. Well, hell, it looks like it's kind of dog... Dogfish head, IPA, dogfish head broom. Where's the beer? Dogfish head 90 minutes. Is any of this shit beer? Dogfish brewed. Oh, this must be like a little private local brewery or something. All right. Sorry, I had to check that out. All right. Uh, let's go here. Vehicle ownership documents. Uh... Swab of red stain. Warning, I'm about to talk about something that could offend you. Blood. Uh, red stain blood. Red stain blood. Red stain blood. Uh, exhibit three. What do we got here? Narrative from Detective Hopkins. So Hopkins swore in this earlier that all this was true. So this statement is a sworn statement. So he better not be freaking lying, a little weasel. Damn Highway Patrol. Oh, I, know, I forgot. He's an attorney general. He's not a Highway Patrol. Maybe he does. All right. I, Detective Hopkins of the Major Crimes Unit. Ooh, Major Crime Unit. Not minor crimes, not little crimes, not not just any crime. We're with the Major Crimes. Damn, I think they made a TV show about that shit. It's just, man, it makes my hair stand up. This is really exciting. Was assigned to investigate a shooting occurred on News Greg. I was notified that the shooting involved an off-duty pocket officer identified Daniel Dolan. Upon arrival, the scene I observed. Vehicle window glass and a single cartridge casing on the roadway of the Wick, Wicked Good Pizza. Wicked? Wicked Good Pizza at 12 Neck Hill Road. Neck 
hill. Man, I don't know if I'd be hanging out that place at night. But anyway, I definitely wouldn't be hiding, riding a horse in that area. At the scene were two vehicles, a black Audi, a Rhode Island passenger vehicle, blah, 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 blah. I was informed that the white Ford was being operated by Daniel and a black Audi was operated by Vincent. Okay. I observed, sorry, I had to drink a cup of coffee. Um, I observed that the driver's front window Audi was damaged, consistent with being struck by gunfire. Well, look, dude. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know about this statement. If if you shoot a window, I'm assume I'm assuming that window is going to shatter, and because I think it's tempered glass, there was tempered glass on the front. It's not tempered on the side. I don't remember, but I don't think you can shoot a bullet hole through a window on a car without it shattering. But if he saw a bullet hole, I'm okay with this statement. If the glass is still intact, like safety glass, and there is a bullet hole, then I would say I observe the driver's front window. Consistent with being struck by gunfire, the glass was broken, but it was still intact, and there was an apparent hole about the size of the bullet or consistent with a bullet going through the glass. I would be okay with that. But if there's no window and it's completely gone, for him to say consistent with a gunfire, I don't know about that. But anyway, again, that's just what, what goes through my head when I read cops' reports. As the DA's office, you know, when we had to follow up on a case or investigate a case, we would get the reports, and I'm sitting here reading these cops' report. I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? Why didn't he ask this? Why? Wh what about this? Why didn't you? So that's how I'm reading this report. Uh, let's see. I was notified by Vincent that he had stained, uh, sustained a single gunshot wound to his left arm and was transported to the hospital. Also appeared to be a dash cam in a car recording. Ooh, cool. On scene, I made compact members, Royal Line and State Police Detective Bureau. Ooh, we had another Detective Bureau there. West Greenwich Police Department, Pentucket Police Department, Rhode Island, Office of the Attorney General. Man, we had all kind of government there protecting and serving. Because this guy was speeding. Wow, got shot by a cop. Protecting and serving the shit out of the community. Look at all this protecting and serving money spent. That's eh, just your money. Just pay more taxes, give up your guns. They'll keep you safe, freaking government trolls. It was determined that the investigators would be led by the Rhode Island State Police in conjunction with the West Greenwich Police Department and Rhode Island Toronto General's Office. So basically, they're saying it was led by this. Each agency is kind of doing their own investigation. I mean, they're cooperating. If they find something they want to share, they can. But they're all doing their separate investigations. I was surprised at what the investigators learned prior to my arrival by the major tierman of by Major Tierman of the West Grand. Oh, so they had a major out there. Ooh, man, a major. It's like high ranking. Wow. See West Greenwich Police Report incident, blah, 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 for additional information. I was notified Daniel's farm was initially seized by Sergeant Andrews of the West Greenwich Police Department. The farm identified 40 caliber but later turned over to Lieutenant. Man, we had a major and a lieutenant. Ooh, and a sergeant. Ooh, at the Rhode Island State Police Department. I was later informed by Lieutenant DeMarco that Daniel's farm was examined and found to have 12 cartridges of ammunition of a maximum of 14 cartridge capacity. Now, most people will go, wait a minute, he fired two rounds. No, a lot of cops won't load their magazines full. They'll load their magazine full. Then when they rack the round and put one in the chamber, their magazine is one short. So that's why he did that. Uh, some people will load it, then they'll remove their magazine, re-put that round and put it in there. But that, that's where you get into 14 and 1 and 12 and 1. Let me make sure I said that right because I'm reading this and talking. I was informed later that the exhibited firearm was examined and found to have 12 cartridges of ammunition of a maximum of 14 cartridges. So it had 12 because he fired one, which would have been 14. So he loaded it with 13 instead of 14, and he fired one, which is why he left with 12. I think that's what happened. Uh, when I start getting into numbers and this shit, I always make a mistake. Then I have all the freaking internet experts coming here telling me, well, according to my calculator and Google said that you're wrong. All right, whatever. I was also notified that a field sobriety test had been performed on Dolan, and it was found that his BAC, blood alcohol content, was 0 .000 in a preliminary breath test. That's the on-the-side road, PAS, you call it. They take it on the side. Then they have to go to the calorie machine if he was over. See incident of trooper. Ooh, there was a trooper there. Ooh, he, he wanted to write somebody a ticket. Probably wrote the driver of the audio ticket for littering glass on the highway. Uh, let's see, Corporal 
Mahoney wrote on his uh, corporal was there too. Damn, corporal, sergeant, lieutenant, major. Holy shit. Rhode Island State Police conducted a canvas for video footage. Good. A check of Big River Spirits. That's where he bought the liquor, probably. Uh, West Grant revealed no video. Oh, no. Maybe he didn't buy it there. No video footage of the incident. Well, who cares if they saw the incident? How about was there video footage of the car speeding by or shooting by or passing or running people off the road? Just because it didn't capture the image, did you go back and ensure that it didn't even catch the cars driving by so you can get a time mark? And a time hack? I don't know about that. Corporal Mahoney uh, may be slacking on the job here. Had too many donuts. Then checked Wicked Good Pizza and examined a video footage revealed video relevant to the investigation. I then examined the video footage that was obtained by Wicked P I observed the black Audi in the parking lot, followed closely by the white Ford. Uh, actually being stalked and rapidly approached by the white Ford, but okay. Uh, when both vehicles came to stop, well... Daniel Dolan exit. I don't know if they both can. Uh, the if I was observing this video, I'd say the Audi pulled into the parking lot. It was rapidly pursued by Daniel and his truck, who immediately pulled up to the driver's side and almost blocking manner, stopped abruptly and jumped out of his truck in front of the Audi. That's the way I what I see in the video. But this officer sees it. Daniel exited his white Ford, removed an article from his waistband, stood in front of the Audi, and held both hands up, making a gesture to stop. The vehicle was already stopped. Why is he gesturing to stop? The black Ollie then immediately reversed because they were scared of the guy with his hands up holding guns and badges in the middle of freaking parking lot and reversed toward New Snack Road. Daniel and Dolan followed the black Ollie until the black Ollie and Daniel Dolan were out of county review seconds later. Daniel Dave returned to his right forward and drove from the parking lot. At this point, I did, at no point, did I observe Daniel Dolan display or discharge his firearm in the video, okay, that's that's accurate. Nobody saw that he what he did out of camera view, and in the video, did not show him with his gun out. I did observe what appeared to be a firearm in the holster of Daniel Dane's right hip. I didn't see that firearm in the hip, but maybe he saw it. I have to go back and look at the video. Uh, I requested trooper preserve the video footage. Uh, highway cameras. Ridge dot must be the. I don't know if that's just a regular camera or if that's a tollway camera. The scene was processed by a lieutenant. I ain't never seen no damn lieutenant process a scene. I've seen lieutenants stand around a freaking scene while someone else does it. Oh, I'm sorry. The scene was processed by lieutenant and detective. What that means for you non-cop people is detective, crybaby, Krakowick, Uh, he did the scene and lieutenant DeMarco stood around and asked stupid questions. All right, of the Rhode Island State Police Forensic Unit. Uh, well, okay, if these guys, so are these guys cops, or are they in a forensic unit? Because forensic units are not always cops. You know, that might change. I don't know. Maybe lieutenants and forensic units actually do help. I don't know. Daniel Dolan was asked to provide a statement in regards to shooting. Daniel Dolan agreed to provide a walkthrough statement and formal statement for investigators. Isn't that nice? Daniel agreed. He's such a cooperative cop. He agreed as long as we let him have a sip from one of his six-pack of Fish head beer, whatever. Present for Daniel Dillon's walkthrough segment was Sergeant Palumbo. Colombo? Was Sergeant Colombo of the Rhode Island Pol State Police. Major Chairman Steve Drummond and Rhode Island Attorney. Damn, everybody. We had a big old crew walking around for this statement. Representatives of the Attorney General. Damn, that was a crowd. At the conclusion of the walkthrough statement, Daniel agree again agreed to provide a formal statement. So the walkthrough statement wasn't a formal statement. That was just like a bullshit statement. His walkthrough was a freaking formal statement. He might have agreed to provide a more detailed statement, but the fir first walkthrough was a formal statement for investigator. Daniel was escorted to the Greenwich by his attorney. Oh, so an attorney present. Um, Michael. Oh, he had an attorney and he still gave a statement. Man, I don't know about that attorney. Daniel's formal statement was taken by Major Tierman and I. Okay, so this, this statement just reads wrong. Daniel's formal statement was taken by Major Tierman and I. I thought you're supposed to read these as if it's, if you take out one, it'll be the same. It was taken by Major Tierman. If you take out Major Tierman, it was taken by I. Should be Major Tierman and me, I believe. But maybe I is correct. Some English major can correct me if I got that wrong. This statement was audio recorded. Good job. 
Now we can't come back and change it later. Present for the interview, union representative, attorney, and Daniel Darwin, super cop with his cape, stated that he had been a member of the, for six years, he currently signed as school resource officers, served in the United States Marine Corps for 10 years. Daniel Dolan stated he had worked that day, starting at 8 a.m. and ending at 7.40. Man, that's a long day for a school resource officer. What'd you do, go to a football game after you got off school? 8 a.m. to 7.40? I mean, he get overtime? Is he working 12-hour shifts? That'll be his complaint. I was working 12-hour shifts. I was really tired. And I wasn't aware. And while I was working, the kids were giving me free donuts. So I had a sugar high. And I want to do the Twinkie Donut defense. All right. What well, Daniel Davis stated that at the end of his shift, he left from the substation, went to a nearby liquor or, or not a little nearby liquor. <laughs> I switched those words. Nearby liquor store on Sunset. Daniel Dolan stated that he purchased a six-pack of beer. And I'm reading fast, people, because I'm trying to get through this because this video is long. So people be cracking like, man, you read too fast. You need to slow down. You need to read. You don't read right. All my freaking experts who don't make videos will be coming here telling me how I get all everything wrong. Six pack of beer and consumed a sip. How the hell did five empty beer containers get in his car from a sip of beer? Ah, uh, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Daniel Dolan stated that he then traveled home on Route 95. Daniel stated that in the approximate area of exit 7 and 6A, he was traveling in the right lane. Right lane would be the slow lane because he was drinking. He didn't want to be in a fast lane. When he observed a black Audi traveling past him at a high rate of speed, Daniel stated that he did observe a black Audi traveling in the breakdown lane to overtake vehicles. So the black Audi was hauling ass and it was passing outside the lanes on the emergency lane. So, okay, it looks like something's up. Daniel stated he believed that the Audi was involved in a high-speed pursuit with police. How do you get from a car speeding to a... Does this guy run around and every speeding ticket he gives, he thinks the guy is running from a police pursuit? I mean, he just doesn't explain how he jumped from this conclusion. And who's ever taken a statement should have asked, how did you get from a car going fast that he was in a police pursuit with no other information? No cars, no looking, no red lights, nobody chased. How did you get to this conclusion, dude? Well, it was a sip of beer that disrupted my thought process. Well, no shit. So he continued driving. He didn't continue driving. He started chasing a dude. This is a flat out lie. This officer did not continue driving. He chased a dude. Daniel stated he lost sight of the vehicle. Well, of course you lose sight of the vehicle. The vehicle's passing on a plane flying by you, and you're in the right lane, supposedly driving normal, drinking beer. He then exited six. He then observed what he believed to be the same vehicle. So somehow, this car going so fast, this Daniel Damison, who just continued to drive normally, somehow didn't want to admit that he sped, didn't want to admit that he used the lane to pass. Don't know how he got past all the cars that the other car was passing on the side of the road, I don't know how Officer Daniel got past him and was able to stay up with the vehicle. I just don't understand it. I'm confused. And when I have questions, I want to clear up those questions because when I read a police report or I take a statement, I don't want there to be any questions. I don't want somebody to come by, what about this? What about that? Because I've been in that position too many times where DA goes, what about that? And I go, shit, I didn't ask that. Go back and take another statement. I'm like, shit, what a dumbass. Now I gotta go find a guy. So that's why I'm good at asking questions when I read these things. Uh, as he got closer, he verified it was the same black Audi. He verified it because he was chasing the damn thing for a long time. How much time passed? And that would be my question. Daniel, from the first time you saw him to where you stopped him, how much time passed? Because this is, this is a confirmed, something that I can confirm through videotape, through time hacks, through the GPS, maybe on a car, through the guy's dash cam. If Dan says... Oh, from the first time I saw him to where I, I pulled him over, it was less than a minute. Well, if he's traveling 125 miles, they should have traveled this much distance, and he caught him at this much distance from where he first saw him. So this gives me, why didn't they ask this question? Who's ever taken his interview, Lieutenant Major, Corporal, Sergeant, whoever the hell's doing it, is doing a shitty job. He verified it was the same. Daniel stated that he observed a black Audi pull into the parking lot. Man, this, this cop's really doing a lot of observing. Did you observe that in the middle of a sip or before the sip of beer? with the five empty beer cans. Uh, wicked Good Pizza, that pulled in the parking lot to speak to the operator. Th did this guy get out of the car and run out of that car like he wanted to speak to him or like he wanted to freaking attack them? 
his whole demeanor was aggressive, authoritative, and controlling. There was no way he wanted to speak to anybody. Daniel Dolan stated he wanted to speak to the Audi's operator to prevent him from possibly injuring. So, oh, Daniel, he's such a good officer. He's a hero. Daniel Davis stated he exited his vehicle, removed his police badge from his belt, displayed it, and told the operator to stop. Daniel Dolan, what? Okay, so he displayed his badge and told the operator to stop. He didn't identify himself as a police officer. He didn't verbally say, I'm a police officer. Here's my badge. I need to talk to you. I want. He didn't say any of that. He ordered to stop and shoved something shiny in his hand. I guarantee you, if I got out of my car on a cop and pulled my badge out and ran in front of the car, they would freaking shoot me and say, I thought he had a gun. He scared me. I was in fear of my life. I mean, this guy never identified himself as a police. Just because he held his badge up does not mean anything. He should have been verbally saying, Police officer, off-duty police officer, I'm stopping you for this reason. Stop the car. I have uniform in your ass. I've already notified. He should have been communicating. Instead, he was being Mr. I'm in control. I got a gun. I'll shoot your ass if you don't listen to me, if you disrespect me, because I got to deal with rotten kids all day as a school resource officer. I just had a beer and worked a 12-hour shift. And you know what? You just got on my last freaking nerve. I'm going to shoot your ass in the arm. How about that, pesky citizen? Because that's what really happened. Daniel Dolan stated the Audi then traveled backwards. When he traveled backward, he was trying to get away. He was not trying to run him over. Call that a clue. Daniel Davis stated that his farm had not yet been displayed. Really? So you run in front of a car and start yelling at a dude without displaying farm. You don't identify yourself as police. You just hold a badge in your hand, something shiny. And when a kid tries to get away, somehow you think he's disrespecting you. So you pull your gun out. Really? Daniel stated that the Audi backed up at an angle, positioning yourself to face. Now, another thing I'd want to know about this statement is, did they tell Daniel, the officer, when they interviewed him, that we have footage from the pizza place? Because that could change his thing. If, if they told Daniel, we don't have any footage, Daniel's statement might be different. And then if they told him we do have footage, Daniel's statement might be different. That's why when you interview as a cop, I don't want to give up any information. I want you to think I don't know anything, so therefore I can confirm whether you lied or whether you're being truthful. Because if you're being truthful about most things and you make a mistake, I can get that. But if you intentionally left out things that are critical and those are the only things you forgot, then it's not a mistake. It's intentional trying to mislead the investigation. So that I'd like to know whether Daniel knew they had video evidence. My guess is, I'm going to take a swag here, swing a wild ass guess, I think he knew there was video footage. They told his attorney. Uh, let's see. Daniel stated he then stepped in front of the Audi, stepping from a position because the car was pulling away. He stepped in front of the car, putting himself in danger, therefore justifying so I can pull my gun and shoot somebody. Again, displayed his piece badge, raised his other hand, signaling for the Audi to stop. Daniel stated he was standing directly in front of the Audi. False imprisonment, kidnapping, uh, in a road. Daniel stated that to his left was his vehicle and to the right was the remainder of the parking lot. So this sounds like when he backed up, I thought the, the Audi backed into the roadway. It sounds like they were still in a parking lot when he backed up and he tried to go forward in a parking lot. Daniel stated the Audi's position was 180 degrees opposite of the original position when he entered the parking lot. Okay. Daniel stated that the Audi proceeded to drive forward. Okay, so if he proceeded to drive forward, he was already driving forward. When you jumped in front of him, he was going forward, right? Because you said you he was proceeding to drive forward, which meaning he was driving forward before you jumped in him. Is that correct, officer? That's what I would have questioned this officer. That's called a good investigation, a good gathering of facts to get understanding of what really happened. Whoever's taking this interview is letting Daniel paint the picture the way he wants it, which is bullshit, which is why it leads to more mistrust for police, more mistrust for government. They protect themselves. They don't treat government and pesky citizens the same. It's bullshit. Daniel Davis stated he was walking backwards slowly towards the roadway, telling the Audi to stop. Daniel stated that he then drew his gun because he moved in front of the moving car and fired a single shot. Well, wait a minute. How did he shoot him in the arm? Daniel stated, Daniel Davis was walking backwards 
slowly towards the roadway and telling the Audi to stop. Okay, so again, I, I got questions here. If you're walking backwards slowly, are you walking backwards parallel to the store or do you walking toward traffic? And if you're walking toward traffic and the vehicle is trying to go forward, then you couldn't be in front of the vehicle if you're moving to the to the roadway. I mean, this just needs to be cleared up better in the statement, and it's not. Daniel stated he drew his firearm. Ooh, fired a single shot to the operator of the Audi. Man, served the shit out of that pesky citizen for speeding. Daniel Dan stated at that moment he fired his pistol. He was walking backwards and to his right in an effort to get out of the Audi's way. He was in fear of his life. Daniel Dolan stated he discharged his firearm. Uh, he discharged, entered the driver's side window of the Audi. Daniel stated that prior to firing his vehicle, he thought that the Audi drove forward. Oh, Daniel stated that prior to firing his vehicle, he thought, that means he's not real clear, that the Audi drove forward. So now we can shoot you because I think you're in a police pursuit. I think you were driving forward. Therefore, I can shoot you and take your life. Make no mistake about it. This was a deadly force action by the officer. He fired his gun with the intent to kill this dude. He wanted to stop the threat. That's why cops fire. Yet there was no threat. He jumped in front of the car. The guy, the kid wasn't unarmed. He wasn't a danger. I mean, this, this case just stinks. I thought that the Audi drove forward. He's going to take me into the roadway with him and kill me. Oh, so when the Audi drove forward, the officer was afraid that he would push the poor officer into the highway and kill him. So therefore, justifies fear of life. Therefore, if I'm fear of my life, I can shoot anything that freaking moves and shooting will be justified. Uh, the Audi was approximately three or four feet away when he fired. That's a pretty good distance. I mean, three or four feet's over arm length. If you're walking toward the road and he's trying to drive away, I mean, it's, it's not like you're in front of the car and somehow you get to the passenger window three feet away and shoot the guy. I mean, that, that I, I don't know about that. That that kind of, I, I'd like to uh, do a little audio visual on this and, and see if Daniel could m help me make a little video on exactly what happened. Daniel stated, that he was unsure how close he was to the roadway he was facing away from. Daniel stated, so by saying he was unsure of the roadway, that creates fear, confusion. Later, they'll be argued uh, if he was to be charged, his defense could say because of the uh, rapidly changing situation, the officer didn't have protection. He didn't have a radio. He knew backup wasn't coming. He couldn't call for backup. He was in danger. He was walking the roadway. His fear was so so fearful that he was going to get run over by a car or pushed into the traffic and this guy was leaving and this guy could have been armed and there could have been guns in the car and he could have had a bazooka and he could have had, you know, poison that he was going to throw in his face. So Daniel was in so fear of his life, this shooting is clearly justified. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy, obviously you can see the officer was in fear of his life and this is a justified shooting. All right, whatever. Uh, facing away, Daniel Dolan has stated he fired his, man, my 48 minutes. Holy shit. Daniel Dolan stated that after he fired his pistol, he reholstered it. Uh, why did he only fire one round? I mean, isn't he trying to fire multiple rounds? Why did he fire multiple rounds? If he was really in fear, remember the Supreme Court said the fact that the officer fired so many rounds showed and legitimized that they were in that much fear of their life. So the Supreme Court ruled by firing a lot of rounds, it shows that you're fearful. What does firing one round show? Well, the logical conclusion is that you're not fearful. But anyway, uh, he returned his veal. Daniel stated that he traveled north. The Audi Dolan stated that he dialed 911 as he pulled up the Audi, stated the information on 911 incident. I want to hear the tape. Daniel stated he observed, has sustained a gunshot wound to his left arm. Daniel stated that he observed Dominic. Has, that's what he stated? He observed some dude with a gunshot wound? He didn't say I shot him? I don't know about that shit. That doesn't make sense. I want to hear the 911 tape on that. Daniel Dolan stated, approached him in a non-confrontational manner that he was apologetic and expressed that he thought he was going to die. So the kid, fear of being shot, couldn't believe that some freaking crazy guy shot him and is still chasing him and pulls up on him. Uh, Daniel Davis stated that he returned to his vehicle, retrieved a sweatshirt. Oh, that's a sweatshirt. So he used a sweatshirt and applied it to his arm. So he did render aid 
and try to stop the bleeding. Okay. I thought one of the kids said that he didn't render aid. So this is different than what the kids said. Using the sweatshirt as a tourniquet, Daniel Dolan stated while he returned, while he was rendering aid, he stated that he did not believe was a real police officer. Good. So the cop stated that the victim said he didn't think it was real love, which shows the state of mind of the victim. It's not like a guy who shot is going to make this up. So this is a very credible statement from the guy that got shot. He didn't believe he was a police officer. Daniel Dolan stated that Con something police, fucking damn word, was the first to arrive on scene and then he could recall and that he could not recall who he turned his firearm over to. Okay. It should be known that Daniel Lane Fornerstein was consistent with his walkthrough statement. Why didn't you record his walkthrough statement? Why didn't why didn't why didn't you record your questions and his answers? Uh, that's what I want to see. I want to see a transcript of the audio recording. But anyway, with the verbal statement made with Major Till and Pryor's at the conclusion of the formal statement, I photographed Daniel Dolan wearing clothes. I seized his t-shirt and beat his pants. The reason you usually photograph cops after shootings is show any injuries, any blood, blood splatter, uh, torn clothes if they were in a fight, injuries, blood on them, etc. Uh, and if no, nothing of that, then you just take a picture. I mean, I have my pictures taken several times. You just stand there and you want to get a picture front and back. So that way they can say what you look like at the time of the scene or right after the scene. We get a good picture of what you look like. So later they can't say, well, I didn't know he was a cop. Because, you know, I used to wear a badge around my neck, a badge on my gun belt. My gun belt, I was usually wearing blue jeans or some type of BDU pants. And then I had that police vest on top that said police on the front and back or gang task force uh, on, on front or back in and, and large letters. So... You know, they always want to claim, I didn't know it was a real cop. And then we take pictures and we go to court and be like, you didn't know this guy was a cop, really? Anyway, uh, Detective Andrew, state police officer, uh, Rhode Island, responded to the hospital, interviewed the suspect. Man, this this uh, interview of the officer was kind of weak in my book. I, I, I would have a lot more questions. Uh, shopping, so let's see. Dominic stated he had traveled. Why did he black out this center? New England Plaza to pick up some friends. Uh, stated that they planned on picking up some pizza and watching the basketball game. Damn, these kids sound like they're like big trouble. I'm glad this cop got them off the road. They were going to be all kind of problems to the pesky taxpayers. Probably cost them money or something. And they were going to have a sleepover at Vince's residence. Stated that he was driving to Audi when he picked up his friends. They went to Walmart. Oh, for groceries. That would have been a Walmart receipt to verify his statement. So that's why they tied that up. Demonet stated after leaving Walmart, they traveled to Wicked Pizza. I drove a little fast from exit 7 from Walmart uh, to exit 6. I was driving a little bit fast. <laughs> I mean, he's a kid. He's 18. They're going to go watch a basketball. I mean, come on, people. Kids, that's the problem with today. When kids make a, sta a mistake today, it's like a life-injuring event. You know, I can't. We used to drive around and literally try to get the cops to chase us. We'd see a cop and then just peel off and take off to see if they would chase us. And they'd look at us like, you freaking kids are being stupid. They'd drive the other way. We'd be like, damn, that wasn't fun. I mean, it's just the, the type of policing that is freaking now. It's like everybody's a target. Everybody's a criminal. And cops are in fear of everything except other cops. It's just crazy. Vincent stated he exited the highway, pulled in a wicked pizza. Before he could get out of the vehicle, he observed a large white pickup truck flying into the parking lot. Which... I mean, sounds like they weren't running from a guy and didn't know he was chasing him. Flying into the parking lot trying to box him in. I would agree with this kid's statement. This truck appeared to be boxing him in. I agree. Benson stated that he observed the white truck's door open and immediately knew there was an issue. <laughs> Put his vehicle in reverse in effort to get away. Of course, that's reasonable. The kid, the 18-year-old, is being much more reasonable than the trained Marine police officer. Dementia stated he observed the white truck's operator, Daniel Davidson, display a badge and have a gun on his hip. Okay, so he admitted seeing the badge, which is probably going to hurt him because, you know, the courts are going to go, well, if you saw the badge, then you should have known he was cop, and you should have complied, and you should have listened, and good, you deserve to be shot. So the fact that he admitted, see, a better statement would have been, I deserve something shiny. If I had talked to this kid, I'd have been like, look, before you give a statement, did you know it was a badge? 
What did it say on the badge? Could you read the writing? No. Do you know how many stars, whether it was a shield or a point? No. What did the badge look like? Uh, I don't know. It just looked like a badge. Well, did it look like a real badge? It looked like a fake badge? It looked like, I don't know. It just looked like a badge. That's the statement I want from this kid. The way this was written up, he saw this. So the cop's writing this in a way that helps the police officer. Vincent stated he observed a white truck, Daniel Dalen, display a badge of gun. That cop ended that there. That If I was interviewing this kid, I'd been like, okay, you said he displayed a badge. Do you know what agency it was from? No. Could you read any letters on the badge? No. Could you read what the badge said? No. That would have been a good statement because when you get to court, then you're going to, that's going to go to whether or not he should have realized that this was a real cop or not a cop. I mean, right here, he should have followed up. When you saw the badge, did the guy identify himself as a badge? Did he say he was the police? Did you did he pull his gun? Did he have his hand on his gun? Did you notice anything else odd? No. I pulled into the freaking parking lot. This guy in the truck jumps out, flashes some sort of badge in my face, and I back away because I don't know what the hell's going on. That's reasonable. I mean, come on. I, this isn't rocket science, people. Stated he did not think Daniel was a police officer based upon his vehicle he was driving, right? The clothing he was wearing, good. Dominic stated that he could hear Daniel yelling, stop, yelling, yelling, stop. Stated that he was backing away. Daniel walked toward his vehicle and stood in front of it. Okay, so this confirms that the officer did step in front of the vehicle. Dominic stated that he was panicked, which is reasonable. 18-year-old kid, crazy guy in a car, blocks him in, pulls out a freaking badge, and then he's wearing a gun, and he's chasing him through the parking lot, and you don't know why? Reasonable. Uh, Daniel Dolan had a gun, and he did not think he was a real police officer. Very reasonable. I mean, we tell women all the time, if you don't think it's a real police officer, keep driving. You don't have to stop. Don't stop. Pull over to save. Call 911. This kid didn't have a chance to do any of that. Everything the kid is doing is reasonable. This is really going to help his case. doesn't help him from getting shot or killed or being dead, but, you know, nobody wants to think about that because... This cop's a hero. Vincent stated that Daniel put his hands on the hood of the Audi. Oh, so he was banging on the car. That's why they got the palm prints. On the Audi and is just standing there. So he's trying to stop him, putting his hand in the car, getting in front of the car to set up deadly force. He wants to create a deadly force situation so he can claim, not that he really is fearful, he can claim fear of his life and shoot, which is exactly what I'm saying over and over. It's been happening for years, and it's just freaking sickening. Vincent stated that he turned his vehicle more towards the road in an attempt to get away, so he's trying to avoid him. Vincent stated that he was driving away. Daniel Days hopped over the hood of the car, so this cop jumped on his hood. That's why all the palm prints are there. See, when you get more information, when I'm reading the evidence report, I'm kind of like, why are they taking palm print here, palm print here, palm print here? Okay, now I know. He tried to stop the car, one, and then he jumped over the hood. Is he really in fear of his life if he's jumping on the hood of a car? Come on, people. Uh, jumped over the hood of the car and ended on the driver's side of the vehicle. Now, somebody's going to say, look, the cop was in front of the car and he had to jump on the hood because he was in fear of his life and he thought he was going to run over. So jumping on the hood of the car shows that he was about to get run over. And he's fearful. I don't believe that. I think this cop was out of freaking control screaming, you better stop. And he jumped on the hood. But, you know. So far, the kid, all right, uh, jumped on the hood of the car, ended up on the driver's side of the vehicle. Vincent stated that he heard Daniel scream, you're going to get shot. So let me get this straight. This cop was so fearful and it happened so fast and he was in so much danger, he had time to jump over the hood of the car, get by the passenger window and warn the kid you're going to get shot. If he warned the kid you're going to get shot when he's standing on the side of the vehicle, he is not in fear or in danger. The kid's just going to drive away. He shot him for driving away. This cop is screwed if they believe this statement. So the cop warns him you're going to get shot, indicating that he wasn't fearful and it wasn't rapidly evolving and it wasn't totally out of control and him shooting wasn't a reactionary measure of his fear of getting run over. It was more of a threat because he was pissed off. Dominic stated that Daniel then immediately shot him. Wow. Vincent also stated that he heard that he was going to be shot. He put his foot on the floor of the gas, which is reasonable. 
stated that he was shielding his body turned toward the passenger seat. When he was shot, Vincent later stated that Daniel Dolan shot him. He was standing at the driver's side of the vehicle and he was traveling forward approximately two or three miles per hour. So he was going slow trying to get away from this guy and then floored it when the guy said he was going to shoot him, which is reasonable. A crazy man chases you down, blocks you, jumps out with a gun and threatens to shoot you and the kid tries to speed away. That sounds pretty reasonable to me. I mean, I think even Ray Charles could see that shit as reasonable, but we'll see. Vincent stated that after he heard a shot, he traveled approximately 1,000 feet down the road, came to stop. He stated that he could not feel his arm and that it was swinging around because it was broken. Vincent stated that he exited his vehicle and observed Dolan and followed him. He was so in fear of his life. He had to follow. Vincent stated that he walked toward the white Ford pickup, pleading with Daniel to help call 911. Vincent stated that Daniel Dolan instructed him to sit down so he sat on the guardrail. Vincent repeatedly stated that he thought he was going to die. Vincent stated that at some time the police had arrived, made some shitty attempt to die. <laughs> that shit's funny. Oh, my God. So Vincent stated that something after the police had arrived, Daniel Dolan made some shitty attempt to die. That shit's funny, people. Come on, man. I would, If I was taking a statement, I would have busted up, man. Because probably Dolan just said, here, man, I'll put this shirt around here and I'll freaking just tie it. And he probably did one wrap and a tie. <laughs> that shit's freaking funny. Rick, it's not funny. Somebody got shot. And he could... Oh, be please, people. Look, we're at one hour. I told you this is going to be a long video. Uh, This is a lot of shits. But you're going to see how an investigator, if I was investigating this, how I would go through statements what I find questions, what I question, why I do what I do, and why officers should or shouldn't do what they do, and why you, as a citizen, shouldn't give a statement that you should or shouldn't do. Should I make this another video so the other one? All right, we're at one hour, two minutes. If you want to come back, I'll do a part two to this, and then that way everybody don't have to complain because obviously some people don't know how to stop a video or turn it off or leave. They would just rather sit around and comments and complain. <laughs> still talking you know i guess it's just too hard let me help you idiots who can't freaking hit pause i'll stop this and we'll do a part two